Hey, 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 awesome people. Mr. C with another Fractions video. Make sure if you learn anything new at all, click that like and subscribe button. Join us as we continue making math understandable and challenging. This video, we are going to be focusing on applying and extending previous understandings of multiplication to multiply a fraction by a whole number. So a lot of words there. Basically what we are doing is we are going to be multiplying fractions and whole numbers using a standard strategy. All right, this will be the teaching video for this standard. Also, I wanna point out in the description below, there's a lot of good information. There is third grade, fourth grade, second grade, fractions, everything we've covered up to this point in a lot of different topics, but also in the description below, parents, teachers, this is for you. There are two links for IXL. IXL is an amazing program that I've used in my classroom. It is a great way for students to get individualized practice, to spend 20, 25 minutes on it, and it allows them to be able to track their learning progress. It is an awesome, awesome program. You can find a seven day free trial and and a 20% off your monthly or annual membership. Both those links are in the description below. Check those out. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you about it, all right? Again, this video is going to be our teaching video for fractions times whole numbers using the standard strategy. Let's jump into it. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, and before we get started, like we say with every video here at Math and Mr. C, make sure you have a growth mindset. What does that mean? A growth mindset means that you're not going to give up whenever it gets tough. You're going to seek out challenges, and you know that when you make mistakes, your brain is actually growing, and we use those mistakes to help us get better, all right? This strategy that I'm going to be showing you today for fraction multiplication is going to build off of so, so many things, <clears throat> excuse me, so many things that we've already learned in fractions, okay? And that's why we've done it in this order is because what we've talked about here at Math and Mr. C is everything we do in math builds off itself, right? So that's the reason we start off back in second grade just understanding what a fraction is. Now we've made it all the way up to the point where we are actually multiplying fractions, okay? So in this video, I'm gonna kind of show you a standard strategy. This is a really efficient way to solve it, but I do wanna point out, make sure you understand that you need to see the answer, okay? You need to see what two thirds times three looks like. And to be able to do that, make sure you check out our models video. We've already done a lot of practice on this using models, so check those out because what you're gonna see here today is a really efficient way to solve it, and it's not gonna take us a lot of time, but we don't want you just to be a human calculator. We want you to be able to understand and see the work that you're doing, okay? So with all that being said, a lot of talking from Mr. C, let's get into it. So we've got two thirds times three. And to get started, I'm gonna really show you the way that I want you to kind of picture in your head to get started, and then I'll show you a really efficient way, okay? So what we're doing here is we're multiplying a fraction by a whole number. Well, we could go ahead and solve this right now, okay? It is doable, it is possible to solve it right now. But, all right, the reason I say but is because there's something we technically could do to make this a little bit easier to see. Okay, it's not gonna change our answer, it's just gonna make it easier to see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this as 2 thirds times a fraction. Now you may be asking yourself, Mr. C, whoa, 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 whoa. Mr. C, what, where, fraction? We already got one fraction up here. We've got 2 thirds, where, where are you getting another fraction from? Like, that doesn't make sense. All right. Here's my question to you. Do you remember what we've learned about whole numbers and how whole numbers can be written as fractions? Think about that. Whole numbers can be written as fractions. So if I had the number seven and I wanted to write the number seven as a fraction, then I would write it as seven over one. Because that, that line there in a way means division. Seven divided by one equals seven, right? Two divided by three equals two thirds, okay? So in a way, if I have a number, a whole number like four, and I wanna write it as a fraction, I could write it as four over one. 
All right, so with this information, how would I write three as a fraction? I would write it as three over one, okay? So I'm gonna erase all this, get it out of our way. So again, this isn't something that you have to do. This is something that I wanna show you so it just you can see it in your head a little bit easier here, okay? So we write this whole number as a fraction, three over one, and now we're gonna multiply. So here's my question to you. What are we gonna multiply? We've got two thirds here. We've got three over one here. What are we doing? How are we gonna multiply this? This is the really easy way to think about it. All right, really easy way to think about it. I like to draw in arrows here. I always show students this. You're gonna multiply straight across. You're gonna multiply straight across. How are you gonna multiply? You're gonna multiply straight across. Numerator times numerator denominator times denominator, okay? So do two times three, that gives us six. Do three times one, that gives us three. And our answer would be six over three. Again, multiply the numerators times the numerators, two times three, six. Multiply the denominator times the denominator, three times one is three. And you get the answer of six thirds, and some of you probably have already done this, six thirds, if we simplify that, gives us two, okay? But my goal for you here is to understand the answer is six thirds. Now hold on a second, Mr. C, what if we didn't write this as a fraction? Is it still possible to solve it? Yes, it is. Okay, let me show you that real quick because I wanna make sure you understand. This here, parents, teachers, is a really great way to kind of introduce this way of solving it. Because again, we haven't done this yet. We've been using models. This is a great way to kind of introduce it. So students, make sure you start off this way because one, it makes sure that you understand how to write a whole number as a fraction, which is a skill that's really important. Because especially when we start adding fractions and subtracting fractions that don't have the same denominators, this is really important. But two, it's gonna allow you to be able to really understand like what's going on. All right, with all that being said, let me show you the, the other strategy. And it's really the same thing, it's just a little bit quicker in a way. Like we don't really care about how fast you solve it here in Math and Mr. C, but that's really the only difference is it just doesn't take as much time, it's less writing. So we've got, I'm gonna change my color here, let's go with blue. So we've got two thirds times three. So what you would do, is instead of just instead of writing this as a fraction, you would just multiply the numerator times the whole number. So that gives you six, and you wouldn't do anything with the denominator. It would just stay the same, and you would get the same answer, six over three, okay? And again, I highly recommend using this strategy here because it is just a good way to make sure you're not making a mistake because what I've seen, and this is something you're probably thinking in your head, students, what I've seen is I've seen students make the mistake of, I didn't wanna do that. I've seen them students make the mistake of multiplying the denominator times three, and then they would get nine over three or nine over two. Okay, so this is just a little safeguard that I have in place by writing like this and drawing in my arrows. It just makes it a little bit easier and a little bit uh, easier for me to track what I'm doing. So that way if I do make a mistake, I can find that mistake. Does that make sense? All right, take a look here, see what's going on. Confused where you're lost at, anything like that. Stick with me, let's try one more. All right, let's try another one. All right, second problem here for us. This time we have a whole number times the fraction. We've got five times one half. Nothing's gonna change with how we solve it, okay? It does not matter if the fraction is first or if the whole number's first. When we multiply, it doesn't really matter the order, okay? The only thing it changes is, what? <laughs> Nothing, right? Three times four equals 12. Four times three equals 12, okay? Same thing here. Doesn't matter which order we multiply this in, we're gonna get the same answer. So, same thing we did in that first part for that last problem. Let's set this up as two fractions. Okay, let's set this up as two fractions. So, we already know what the second fraction is. The second fraction is one half. Now, how do we write five as a fraction? How do we write five as a fraction? Well, to write five as a fraction, five would go as the numerator, 
and then the denominator would be 1, 5 over 1, all right? Now we get to do some multiplication, so let's do that. Remember, when you multiply fractions, multiplying straight across, okay, multiply straight across. Drawing my arrows here, 5 times 1 is 5, 1 times 2 is 2. Again, we multiplied the numerators, we multiplied the denominators, and we get an answer of 5 over 2. Okay, so there's your answer. Again, this strategy here is my favorite strategy um, just because it just it makes it very clear as to what you're multiplying and how you got your answers. And that's something in math that's really important, parents and teachers, is that students can tell you where they're getting their numbers at. The reason that's important is because they will be able to find their mistakes if they are making them. Students, again, we always, always, always are trying to find our mistakes. Our mistakes help us get better, okay? So if you wanted to solve it the other way, if you wanted to do five times one half, you would multiply five times the numerator so that's five denominator stays the same and you get five over two either way works again parents teachers i recommend this strategy here to get started they'll get to this point they'll start doing this part in their head but right now this is really important the reason it's really important is because very soon in our fifth grade standard you'll start multiplying fractions if you're going to start multiplying fractions, why not just go ahead and get used to doing it the way I'm showing you and multiplying straight across? Okay, that's why I'm showing you this top strategy and saying, hey, I recommend, I recommend, I recommend. Okay, so how are we feeling? Where are you stuck? Where are you lost? What doesn't make sense? Rewatch it if you need to and try this last one with us. Last problem alert we've got two fifths times four. At this point, you may want to pause me and try it on your own. If so, go for it. Let's try this one out. So we've got two-fifths, and we are going to be multiplying it by four. So how do we write four holes as a fraction? How do we do that? Well, to do that, we are going to write four as the numerator and one as the denominator. Now we get to multiply straight across how do we multiply straight across how do we multiply straight across multiply the numerators two times four equals eight multiply the denominators five times one equals five your answer is eight fifths there you go all right this here i love teaching multiplying fractions and the reason i love teaching this here is because think about the type of work we've already done think about especially when i teach this in fifth grade because a lot of times fifth grade is where they're just like blown away by it adding and subtracting fractions is is a challenge man adding and subtracting fractions is hard it is tough it is a challenge and then you get to multiplying fractions and we're like hey just multiply straight across and it's just so different, right? When we add and subtract fractions, we have to make sure the denominator is the same. And then we don't add or subtract the denominator. But when it comes to multiplying fractions, you multiply numerator times numerator. You multiply denominator times denominator. And it's just so much different. But I always find students are like, whoa, Mr. C, why did we learn this one last? This one's, this one's the least challenging one. And I'm like, well... I had to get you to this point. I had to show you that you were able and capable of learning all of that tough stuff so I could give you something like this. All right. So students, ask yourself where you stuck, where you lost, what doesn't make sense. Make sure you can see the answers that you're getting. Remember, check out our models video if you haven't watched it because I don't want you just to be a human calculator. I want you to be able to understand this and be able to explain it and be able to see the math you're solving. Parents, teachers, Reminder in that description below is that I excel codes, a free seven day membership and 20% off. Those are great ways for students to get some independent practice and to master this skill. All right. Make sure once you've watched this, check out our practice problems video. It is in the description below. Check that out. Try a few more with us. 
Also, if you learn anything new at all, click that like and subscribe button. Join us as we continue making math understandable and challenging. That's all I have for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. C, out.